Hello and welcome. In this new series, we're going to be diving into Langgraph, Langchain's powerful framework for building agentic and multi-agent applications. We'll be following along with the excellent introduction to Langgraph course provided by the Langchain Academy. If you look at the examples provided in the course, you'll notice they are typically configured to use a powerful closed source model like OpenEyes Jeep T40. This is great for performance, but it requires you to set up an API key and will incur costs as you run the examples. For developers who are just starting out or want to experiment without worrying about API builds, this can be a barrier where our twist comes in. Throughout this series, I'll be adapting these examples to run with free open source models that you can run locally using Olama. This will allow you to learn and build without any cost. Before we dive into the code for this module, let's get our development environment set up. Throughout this course, I'll be using a modern tool called UV for managing our Python packages and virtual environments. If you're not familiar with it, it's an extremely fast package and project manager written in Rust. The first thing you'll need is the course material from the Langchain Academy GitHub repository. Next, we need to install OV to run large language models locally. We're going to use a fantastic tool called Olama. Olama makes it simple to download, install, and run powerful open source models right on your own machine. Download the application. Once Olama is installed, we can explore the available models. On the Models tab, you'll find a huge library of popular models. For this demonstration, we're going to use Quen3, which is a powerful and efficient mixture of experts model. Click View All. We can see even more versions of the model. Notice that there are different sizes, like 1.7 billion, 4 billion, and 8 billion parameters. Since I'm running this on a Mac Mini with limited resources, my strategy is to always start with the smallest model that can get the job done. My plan is to start with the 0.6 billion version. If I find that it's not capable enough for a complex task, I can incrementally move up to a larger size until I find the right balance of performance and resource usage. To be even more efficient, I'm going to select a quantized version. Quantization is a process that shrinks the model's file size, allowing it to run faster and use less memory with minimal impact on performance. Q4KM version indicates a specific well-balanced quantization level that's perfect for local development. As you can see, even the default 0.6 billion parameter model uses this same quantization, so it's a great standardized choice. Now that we've selected our model, let's switch back to the terminal to download it. Now I'm inside the Langchain Academy directory. The goal is to create a single centralized virtual environment for the entire project. This way, we won't have to create a separate environment for each module, which simplifies dependency management. This command creates a PI project, TOML file, which is the modern standard for configuring Python projects. Next, let's create the virtual environment itself. This command creates an isolated environment named Langchain Academy where all our project's packages will be installed. To start using it, we need to activate it. Notice how the terminal prompt now shows Langchain Academy. This confirms that our virtual environment is active. 
working inside this environment prevents any conflicts with other Python projects on my system. Now it's time to add our dependencies. I'll, I'll open the requirements. I'll add Langchain Olama to this list. With our new dependency added and the file saved, we can now install everything. This tells to read all the packages from the file and install them into active environment. We have all the necessary tools installed in an isolated environment. Let's start by looking at our imports. From Langchain, we're bringing in system message to define our agents instructions and chat open AI as a potential language model. For this demo, we want to use a local model. So I'll add an import for Chatalama from the Langchain Olama library. This allows us to connect to any model served by Olama. From Langgraph, we'll import key components like state graph to build our agent's logic, messages state to manage conversation history, and a pre-built tool node to handle tool execution. Now, let's define the capabilities of our agent. First, we need to create the tools it can use. For this example, We've defined three simple Python functions, add, multiply, and divide. We then collect these functions into a single list called tools. Next, we'll configure our language model. We'll set up Chatalama. I'll paste in the configuration here. We're initializing Chatalama and specifying the exact model name that we've already pulled locally. We're also setting a few parameters. Temperature controls the creativity of the output and num predict limits the maximum number of tokens to generate. Let's change the default negative one to 512. A crucial step is to make language model aware of our tools. This creates a new version of the LLM that knows how and when to call our arithmetic functions. Every good agent needs clear instructions. We'll define a system message that sets the agent's persona and goal. Here, we're telling it, you are a helpful assistant tasked with writing and performing arithmetic on, on a set of inputs. Now we can start defining the nodes of our graph. A node is a function or runnable that represents a step in our agent's workflow. Our primary node is the assistant. This function takes the current conversation state, invokes our tool, bound LM with the system message and the message history, and returns the result with our nodes defined. We can build the graph. Let us break down this graph. It consists of four main nodes. The process always begins at the start node, which is our entry point. From there, it moves to the central assistant node. This node is powered by LLM and acts as the brain of our agent. It decides what to do next. Based on the user query, the assistant makes a decision. It can either route to the tools node if it needs to perform a calculation, or it can route directly to the end node if it can answer without a tool. The tools node is responsible for executing our predefined functions like add, multiply, or divide. After the tools node runs and gets a result, the flow loops back to the assistant node. This allows the LM to process the tool output and generate a final human readable answer. We'll start by creating a state graph instance using messages state to track the conversation. Next, we add our nodes to the graph, giving each a unique name. We add the assistant node we just created and a tools node using the pre-built tool node from Langgraph, which automatically handles executing our tools. 
we then define the entry point for the graph by creating an edge from the special stat node to our assistant node. This tells the graph to always begin with a call to the assistant. We need to add a conditional edge to route the conversation based on the assistant's output. We use the pre built tools condition function for this. If the assistant's last message was a request to use a tool, the graph would direct the flow to the tools node. Otherwise, if it was a final answer, the flow will go to the END node, adding a simple edge from the tools node back to the assistant node. This creates the essential loop that allows our agent to use tools. Finally, with all our nodes and edges defined, we call builder.compile. Here, I'll walk you through setting up your environment to run LangGraph Studio. We'll start inside our Projects Studio directory. The first step is to configure our environment variables. I'll replace the placeholder content with the necessary variables for Langsmith. Here in the Langsmith dashboard, navigate to the settings section, click the create API key button and paste the key into our environment file. Rename the file. Next, let's look at the langgraph.json file. This is the main configuration file for Langgraph Studio. It tells the studio which graphs to load. The graphs object maps a name that will appear in the UI, in this case, agent, to the location of the graph object in our Python code. This file also specifies the path to r.nv file. With the configuration complete, we can start the studio. I'll open the terminal, navigate into the module 1, and then the studio directory. Now I'll run the command langgraph dev. It looks like we've hit an error. The console says failed to load graph router and mentions that the open AI is missing. This is happening because our langgraph file is trying to load multiple example graphs. Since we only want to work with our agent graph for this demo and remove the entries for simple graph, Let's try that command again, langgraph dev. This time it starts up successfully. Let's give this another try to test the agent's memory. In the previous turn, we asked for the sum of two plus two and it correctly returned four. Now I'll input a new prompt, multiply the result by two and submit it. Okay, let's see how the agent handles this. In its thought process, it correctly figures out that the user wants to multiply the previous result. It remembers that the result was 4 and identifies that the correct function to use is multiply. It then decides to call the multiply tool. At this point, the process is interrupted, which is a feature that allows for human in the loop review. Everything looks correct, so let's continue. The tool executes the multiplication and returns the result, which is 8. Now, if we look at the full trace of the experiment, we can see the entire history of the interaction. So that wraps up everything I wanted to share for today. In the next few videos, I'll cover the rest of the material from the course picking out the most important concepts I've found to quickly show you how to get hands on with Langgraph. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like the video, please subscribe. That would be really helpful. I'll see you next time.